Hey everybody, Dustin Schmidt back here again today. Today I'm going to talk about what I keep in my camera bag. And this is my stills camera bag. So I make a living shooting video and also shooting photography. And I've probably been doing the photography part longer than the video part. Almost the same amount of time, but I've been taking photos longer. And I've been through a lot of different systems over that time. And I've kind of settled on what works best for me. And today I'm going to talk about the cameras I use, the lenses I use, and just kind of walk you through what a, a working commercial photographer keeps in their bag. So let's go check some of that out. All right, so the bag that I use is the Think Tank Airport Roller Derby. And I've been through a lot of camera bags and I really think if you're anywhere that's not gonna require you to say hike your gear in or go over a lot of uneven rough terrain, then you want a bag that's on wheels. Uh, the camera gear is very heavy. The more lenses, the more bodies that you get. That stuff just starts to weigh a lot and that can wear on you. Um, and especially if you're moving to different locations throughout the day, things like that. Anything you can do to make it easier on yourself, like getting your gear in bags with wheels, I think is a must. This is like, <laughs> call it a pro tip. If you're young, whatever, you're not going to be young forever. Uh, Trust me, get something that's on wheels. And not only that, but get something that's on four wheels and swivels. That's what I like about this Think Tank Roller Derby bag is that it has four wheels. It's a lot like airport luggage, right? The two wheels is okay, but when you extend that out and you're pulling that behind you, it's still a lot of weight that you're pulling. That can really start to wear on your arms. And your arms are what's supporting the camera the whole time that you're working anyway. So... This bag I've had for a long time. I've bought it multiple times when I've worked either in-house or out-of-house. I think this is the best bag for hauling a decent amount of camera gear around. Um, I think if you're going out to shoot stuff for fun, things like that, you should probably be carrying less camera gear and you probably don't need something this robust. But let me show you everything that fits in this bag because it's quite a bit of stuff. So I'm actually gonna start on the outside of the bag here. And one of the things that I like about this bag is that it has strap attachments or points where you can put straps to attach stuff. So we've got a nice handle on this side. It gives you some purchase if you're pulling this out of like an overhead. This will fit in a standard uh, plane overhead so you can use it as a carry-on. If I'm traveling for work, all my camera gear goes in the cabin with me. Um, I do not allow this stuff to be checked. Uh, I need my gear when I get on site or there's really no point in me going. So, and I don't trust, <laughs> I don't trust baggage handlers and everybody else. So you got handle here, handle here. You've got a telescoping handle. Comes out here again, just like luggage. And a handle here on the bottom as well. On the side here, what you've got is strap attachments for attaching a tripod. Um, we've got a little pouch here on this side. Let's see if I can show you that without. So we got a strap here and then we've got a little pouch here that you can slide a tripod leg into and attach that on really strongly. So that lets you roll with your, with your camera support, with your camera gear in the same bag. For tripod, I've got a couple different ones, but if I'm doing professional work, I'm using this tripod. This is a really right stuff, uh, 24L. It's their version one. So they've come out with a second version since then. Has some upgrade locks on the legs, things like that. Um, but this is what I use. It's a carbon fiber tripod. Uh, it goes extremely high. It's a multi-section. It's a, we've got one, two, three, four section tripod. So this will go extremely high. This will get above where my head's at. And I'll have to look up exactly um, how high this goes, but it also collapses down to a reasonable size. Um, this will not fit in like a, a backpack or something like that. But like you saw here, it will fit on the side of this rolling case. This is an expensive tripod. Um, there's no two ways about it. If you're gonna get a tripod, spend money on something that is gonna last you. A tripod is a 
many, many year investment, you know, 10, 12, 15 years, you know, or longer. At the end of the day, it's just a, a set of sticks that you put your camera on. But there's so many little things that make these useful and you want something that's going to lock down solidly, uh, you know, that's relatively lightweight and, and just is going to serve you over the course of your career. If you buy cheap stuff, you're just going to end up buying it again. So buy once and cry once, you know, spend the expensive amount of money, cry a little bit about it, and then use it for the rest of your time. Um, you, you will always be served by buying high quality gear. So this is the tripod that I like. It's what I use. Um, I like that I can also use this for video if I want to. I've got a little quick detach up here that allows me to swap out a ball head for something else with an Arca Swiss. So I can pop a camera direct in here with an Arca Swiss plate if I want. This is the really right stuff uh, leveling ball head. So if I'm not, you know, on completely even terrain, I can level the ball head here, which is helpful if I've got a fixed kind of video camera. Um, or, you know, if I have a ball head up here, obviously I can level things um, pretty easily, but this just allows me to swap out kind of the tops of this. So that's the tripod. As far as camera systems go, I am a Canon guy at the moment. Um, I've, I say at the moment because I've shot different systems over the years. I've shot Nikon, I've shot Canon, I've shot Fuji, uh, all for stills. Uh, never really got into Sony, although Sony makes great cameras. Uh, but at the moment I shoot Canon, I like the files. Um, I, I like the speed and easy use of the body. This is just a professional tool. Um, I have other cameras that are or stills cameras that are maybe more for fun or for family or stuff like this. If I'm not working, then I'm using a professional tool. And so that's what, you know, a Canon is. This is the Canon R5C. It's, I think it's the best camera that Canon makes. Uh, there's an argument maybe between this and the R5, depending on, on what you need in terms of some of the features. But as a hybrid camera, since I also shoot video, this does everything and it does it equally well. I've got an entire review on the R5C, you know, why I like it so much, why it's so versatile. Um, I think you should go check that out if you're interested in this camera. Uh, but this is what I shoot with right now. It gives me extremely large, you know, files to work with, 45 megapixel files, you know, shoots raw. So you can really push and pull those around uh, and kind of get whatever you need out of it. Now, this is an RF mount camera. Most of my lenses are EF lenses. And the reason for that is because I started to acquire EF lenses before Canon ever came out with the RF mount. And so I have an investment in these lenses. There's nothing wrong with them. When they came out with the RF mount, they did make some very nice lenses, um, some that are probably optically superior to what you can get in the EF mount. But it's so imperceptible in my opinion. Clients are not gonna see that, that difference necessarily. Uh, you just don't, you don't have to upgrade those. And the benefit of buying EF right now is that you can get some less expensive glass now that they've come out with RF. There's people offloading this stuff um, and you can get it for a discount and it's gonna work really well for you um, just as well as it ever did when people were shooting professional work for it for you know, 20, 30, 40 years before they came out with the new stuff. So do yourself a favor, um, buy the EF stuff if you don't have the money. Uh, if you've got the money, do whatever you want. The other nice thing about this is that I like is that I've got the EF to RF adapter here. This one's a Mikey one that has a built-in variable ND. Again, I like this for shooting video. I'll also use it for shooting stills and I'll swap out the variable ND for the clear filter. And then I've also got the basic Canon uh, adapter that just adapts EF to RF. Uh, normally that would be in my bag here if I was shooting stills. It's actually on the camera that's recording me right now. Um, so you're not gonna see that in here, but that's the, the other thing. Um, always have a backup camera. At the moment, uh, and to that point, always try to have the same backup camera if you can. So for me, that would mean either getting another R5C 
or an R5 for use when it comes to stills. Now, I used to have an EOS R and I've offloaded that temporarily. So I'm gonna re be replacing that with either another R5C or an R5. Uh, really just kind of contemplating that at the moment. So while I'm in the middle of doing that, hopefully soon, I actually still have a backup camera in here. And this is the Fujifilm X100V. It is not the same type of camera as an R5C. This is what I would consider more of a, a fun camera, uh, maybe a family camera, stuff like that. But you could use this for professional work if you need to. It'll give you a raw file. It will shoot a high enough number of megapixels. And it also gives you the ability to control external flash uh, via you know, a flash trigger up here. I think that's the other important thing that you need out of a backup camera. Um, and it has full manual control of everything. Now it is a fixed lens. It's a, a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. Uh, but you can do a lot with that focal length. And I've shot entire things, um, entire campaigns and, and jobs with just a single focal length. So again, that's kind of more of the backup at the moment. Uh, but honestly, there's th this, this thing is a tank. The R5C is a pure tank. So things do fail all the time. Equipment can break. Um, you know, there can be an accident on set. Uh, but I've never had any issues using this camera at all. So... Let's talk about lenses a little bit. What lenses do I normally carry when I go out? Um, again, when I'm going on a full-fledged job and, and I'm not necessarily uh, set on what focal length I'm gonna use or what I'm gonna need, I bring basically all my lenses, all my stills lenses. So I've got a set of fast primes in here and then I've also got a set of zooms. Um, whenever I can and when time allows, I'm shooting with the primes because they give you a little better quality and especially if you need the separation of a fast lens, most zooms are not gonna quite get you there. So zoom's got a little more versatility, typically not as fast. This is the 24 millimeter L version two, uh, 1.4. So this is a very fast 24. So this gets me out to the wide end and it gets me there with a lot of speed. So this is a nice lens for um, if you really want to take in the scene and maybe still put somebody as a subject, um, put them in the center of this and it's going to get the job done. So this is a great lens. Um, stepping up from there, we'll kind of go up. I've also got the Canon EF mount 35. This is the 35 1.4 as well. Also the version two. So This is a fantastic lens. I've shot so many photos on this lens and this focal length. And there's something really kind of, um, I don't know if you'd call it magical or whatever. This, this thing has a look that, that is very nice. Um, I've also got the 50 mil 1.2 right here. So again, we've got an incredible amount of speed here. This is a pretty compact lens um, and gets you that 50 mil focal length that, that again is a very versatile focal length. So those are actually the primes that I carry, the 24, the 35, and the 50. Um, and, and that's what I like to, to roll with. That's typically where I like to shoot. Um, anything longer than that starts to get a little bit too long for me, unless you're just doing a pure portrait. Uh, I think if you're a, a wedding photographer or something like that, um, I do think a fast like 85 or 100 is a great, great lens to have. Um, I probably will get an 85 at some point. Um, I, I just haven't really had a, a huge use for it yet. But I do cover that focal range later on. Then I also have three zooms here. So if you're moving a little faster and you need to get stuff done, um, you just don't have time to be switching lenses every time. You want to snap off a shot at, at one focal length and quickly go to another for a different look. A zoom's great for that. So I've got the 16 to 35 F4. The reason I have the F4 and not the F2.8 is because the F4 is image stabilized. And typically if I'm shooting that wide, if I'm going wider than 24, for example, which I have a prime, I'm in that 16 to 24 range. Um, I'm probably stopping down and I'm shooting something that needs a deeper 
you know, a deeper depth of field. So whether that could be a, a building or a landscape or something like that, or an interior, um, F4 is probably going to be fine for that. I'll probably be on a tripod shooting that stuff. So this is my wide lens. And this mainly gets used on the very, very wide angle of it. I'm also good for video though. If I'm shooting Super 35, then I'm a little more cropped in. So that 16 becomes more useful. And that's where I really like the IS on this. So from there, just kind of up to the standard Canon 24 to 70, 2.8 version two. Uh, the version two is a big step up from the version one. The version one is kind of soft. It, it has a lot of issues. The version two of the EF mount of this is tack sharp. This thing is an absolute beast. Uh, a lot of people say it's one of the best zooms uh, of that 24 to 70, 2.8 range that, that anyone has made from any, any one of the companies that makes lenses. So this is a great lens. Um, this is just kind of your bread and butter lens, right? Like you can do that 24 to 70 focal range. You can do almost everything with that. So if you're gonna buy one lens, buy this one. That'll, that'll get you a long ways. And then on top of that, I have the Canon 70 to 200, 2.8 uh, image stabilized. I believe this is the version two. It's not their absolute newest one. Uh, they have at least a version three. There are some improvements in those. Uh, obviously things get a little better each time they make it, but this does everything that I need it to do. And this is my long lens. So I've used this for interviews. You use it for, you know, landscapes, whatever it is, image stabilized. So you can put it on a, on a shoulder and use it for video. Um, just has a real nice focal range. And if I need a, a second tighter angle for like an interview or something, you can zoom to 85, to 100, to 200, wherever you need to go with this lens. So. That's kind of that holy trinity of lenses, right? The, the three zooms that cover those main focal lengths. Those are the lenses that I roll with. I don't have any specialty lenses as far as a fisheye or the super wide Canon, like that 11, you know, mil zoom that goes all the way out or some of those longer, you know, 100 to 500, stuff like that. Um, or any of like those sports kind of lenses, you know, 600 or 800 or anything like that. I don't shoot you know, those focal lengths. I am mainly within this, this wheelhouse. So those are the lenses I have. If I need something else, then I would specially, I would probably go out and rent it. Um, other things that I keep in this case here, I've got my flash triggers. So I'll pull those out. I, I've went through a lot of different flash systems as well. At the moment I shoot with Godox and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why. And this is just the X-Pro C trigger for Godox and I actually have two of these. I've got a main one, I've got a backup. So you always need to be able to trigger your flash. If that goes down for any reason, uh, you need to have a backup for that. And these are relatively inexpensive for what they do and, and give you full control over multiple channels of flash, you know, up to five different flashes you could have on here um, with complete independent control of all of them. It's really kind of amazing where flashes have gone. Again, I've shot a lot of different ones over the years. And honestly, the, the Godox is absolutely incredible, especially for the price. So we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, I've also got battery chargers in here. So I've got battery charger for my Fuji, again, for my backup camera. I've got a uh, Godox flash trigger for the Fuji. I mentioned that earlier, just the ability to uh, potentially switch over that if needed and still be able to control external flash. I've got battery charger for the Canon and spare uh, LPE6 NH battery for the Canon. So we've got one in there and then back up here. Uh, I've also got an additional one in this pouch here. I've got media. So a couple different storage cases for media. The R5C is nice because it shoots on, I actually like that it shoots on two different kinds of media. It shoots to a uh, CF Express Type B and also to an SD card. Um, when it comes to stills, either one works fine. If I'm doing purely a stills job, I like to shoot to the CF Express because it will offload quicker afterwards when you're pushing a lot of files, downloading them, 
the CF Express is just faster than SD and I can quickly get photos off. So I've got multiple versions of that, of media in here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, five different CF Express Type B cards and you know numerous SD cards in here. So that's kind of this main, main area here. Um, I also have in here, of course, a uh, card reader. This is a dual card reader. This is a CF Express Type B and SD card reader. This is a ProGrade. It's a USB-C. Uh, I've got a single one of those. I've got additional batteries in this pouch, so we're just digging through here. Um, a couple extra batteries for my Fuji X100. Various cables, SD cables, things like that. Um, I've got the ND filter for the Mikey adapter here. Again, I said the clear one's in there. Here's the variable ND. Sometimes I actually will shoot with the variable ND when I'm doing stills. If I want to do something, you know, playing with shutter speed outdoor and external flash and things like that, there's some stuff you can do in terms of putting some ND um, on your camera there. So I've got spare AA batteries in here. These are rechargeables. They're uh, PowerX NIMH AA's. Those go in the uh, flash triggers. I've got some backup card readers. This one's an SD, micro SD. We've got some Allen wrenches and a couple little things in here in terms of some more cables and things like that. Just kind of backup. So this is mostly cables, spare batteries, things like that. Camera gear all goes in here. Inside the lid here is where I normally keep my laptop. So this is where I would have, um, I've got a MacBook Pro, the 14 inch. Um, just goes in this main pocket here. At the moment it's not in here because I'm using it to edit and do some stuff. But uh, I also carry a master location pack of gels. Um, those go over the flashes and those can be great. If you want to add some color to a background, you want to warm something up, um, just kind of whatever you want. I still think there's a, a value and a benefit in having color correction gels uh, nowadays when you're on, on set. They just let you do quite a bit. A uh, little portable pop-up softbox. I don't use this that often, but um, always kind of there if you need it. And I've got a big tether cable in here. So if I'm doing something commercial, this is from Tether Tools, um, then I may be going direct to a laptop as well as a client monitor, and just kind of have a full setup there in terms of, um, you know, client review, being able to see your image larger so you can pick out and find mistakes, things like that. Um, it's not always good if you're moving fast, but uh, for commercial projects where you're gonna be in a single location or in a studio or something like that, I think shooting tethered to a monitor uh, or a laptop is a, a bonus, a good thing to do. So. so there it is. That's the camera gear that I bring on every job, camera lenses, triggers, things like that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about external flashes in another video here. Uh, but let me know what you take out. What do you roll with? Are you a professional hobbyist? What do you like to shoot with? Um, leave your questions down in the comments and I'll check it out. And we'll see you again next time.